character episodes are the equivalent of arcade mode in prior games. You just fight a few enemies and then you get a cutscene at the end. Some of them are like what if scenarios, like what if person X won the King of the Iron Fist tournament, and some are other what if scenarios, like what would happen if this person fought better in the story mode. So this is heavy spoilers for the story mode and for the character episodes, obviously, and we are just going to start in alphabetical order. Let's start with Alyssa. The fights were pretty irrelevant, like the first three fights had nothing to do with Alyssa at all. The second to last fight was Jack and they have a unique intro because they're both robots, but that's it. The last fight was against Lars. She won against Lars and then they had a very cute chipping moment. So it's very basic, kind of cute. I think it's a B. It like, it's nothing special. It works. It's kind of cute. It's like enjoyable. It's a B. Let's see Askas. We are starting with Panda, which is pretty relevant. Then Azosena, which is pretty relevant. Then Brian, who is completely irrelevant. Xiaoyu, who is completely irrelevant as well. So the fights are completely relevant except for Lily. Lily is the final fight. That's relevant to this part. もう元通りやな。門下生も早く戻ってくるとええな。そういえばあのお嬢様、あれ以来姿を現しとらんけど、今頃どこで何しとるんやろな。うっす。エクスキューズマ。出た。って何やこれ。自宅を Je n'aurais pas dû acheter ton dojo. Nous devons gagner à la loyale pour pouvoir créer victoire. Maintenant, battons-nous. Ah, quand y'a quoi ici? Maeva. Takatiki. Je vais me venger pour le tournoi. I guess it's enjoyable if you like these characters. I think they are all right. I don't really like Asuka or Lily, but I don't dislike them, they are just there. I think their rivalry is not really funny and the fights were pretty boring. This is like C or even D tier. It, it was kind of boring. Like it's not actively bad. I think it's C tier because it's not actively bad. If it was actively bad, I would put it at D, but that way I will put it at C. Azucena is next. The first fight is Yoshimitsu, that's pretty relevant. Then King, that's pretty relevant. I th like that she asks all of them what their favorite drink is, and Yoshimitsu says tea, King says coffee, Dragunov does not say anything, Jack does not say anything, and then it's Lily. Lily says it's tea. During the tournament, Azucena met the tea-loving socialite Lily. Even after the tournament concluded, the pair would continue to clash in heated debate. A feud between coffee and tea. Il faut du thé pour clore un repas. Ce thé Rochefort rose cultivé sur nos terres est absolument divin. De qué hablas? Es obvio que es café. Nuestra mezcla de azucena es la mejor. Oye, ¿cuál crees que es el mejor? 
No parece interesarle a ninguno de los dos. ¡Ah! ¡Ya sé! ¿Qué tal si los mezclamos juntos? J'ai entendu parler d'une boisson de ce genre en Asie. Alors, c'est de l'appropriation culturelle. Ay, no seas anticuada. Aquí hay un pequeño extra. ¡Tarán! ¿Qué tal esto? Te apuesto que funcionará. Mi inspiración nunca me falla. ¿Eh? ¿Ah? <risa> Sabía que sería bueno. Azucena would go on to sell this drink to global acclaim. The cutscene is Lily and Azucena making a blend of coffee and tea. And I think it's pretty weird that she was like, this is cultural appropriation. And Azucena was like, what the hell, man? Uh, it's... it's all right. The fights were very irrelevant. The cutscene at the end was all right. I think it's... it's C. Uh, it's just C. Okay, Brian is next. Law is pretty relevant. Paul is pretty relevant. Uh, Horang is irrelevant. Dragunov is irrelevant. Finals against Yoshimitsu. That is a rivalry that exists. And the cutscene is really fun. Like, it's Horang, Paul and Law. I think it's quite funny. I think it's funny that uh, Law gets hit with it and, yeah, it, it's decent. It's like low A, high B. Like, the fights were pretty irrelevant, except that they showed up in the cutscene. And the cutscene was quite funny. I like the cutscene. Yeah, I think it's low A. Let's do low A for now. Claudio. Claudio is the first uh, story one. So this is like a what if scenario if he fought better in the story. So that's why his first fight is against Devil Jin, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it, it fits the theme. Then it's against Kazuya. Then it's against Devil Kazuya, which is fun. And the, the final fight is against Zafina. That's, that's not the, it's not the final fight. I, I don't think it's the final fight. I think I'm, I'm hallucinating. The final fight is against Azazel. I like the theme. I like this a lot. Like what if uh, he was in the story? What if he, he did better in the story? I like this a lot. La terribile calamità è stata annientata. Creature maledette, sprofondate nell'oscurità per sempre. And then in the cutscene, he just kills Azazel and continues to live. I like this one a lot. It's a story thing. Everything fits well together. And I like this alternate ending that obviously in the main story, he died. Spoiler, but I, I gave a spoiler warning at the beginning. He died. And in this alternate ending, he wins and he actually kills Azazel and defeats both Devil Kazia and uh, Devil Jin. I like, I like it a lot. I just thought, well, it's way better than Brian's. Maybe it's even low S. I just 
thought that I really hate fighting against the Devil Kazuya at Azazel. And uh, yeah, like it was not really fun fighting against them. It was not really fun fighting against them in the story as well. And that breaks it down a bit. But I I liked it. It's high A or low S. Let's keep him at uh, high A for now. Devil Jin next. So he fights against Raven, then Raven's boss, then Kazuya, then June in the Descent of Consciousness for whatever reason, and then Jin in the Descent of Consciousness. Ah, the theme is the rebel hideout was attacked and Jin went into angry mode and then let uh, Devil Jin lose. Devil Jin defeats everyone that stands in his way and then he defeats uh, June and Jin in his subconscious so that he prevails and Jin ceases to exist. This cutscene looks so cool, him dodging the orbital strikes and then flying into space and then lasering all of the satellites and then he just destroys the world. That's so over the top, that's so maniacal, I like this one a lot. He just destroys the world. Yeah, this one is S tier. This, this is so fun. He just destroys the world, the entire world, the entire earth got destroyed. <laughs> Man, what was Dragunov's? Let's fight against uh, Alessa, then Shaheen, then Law. It's pretty irrelevant. These are all pretty irrelevant, except for Victor. Victor has had a rivalry against Dragunov, and Raven is Victor's disciple. That's the only reasons. The Mishima Zaibatsu, as well as its myriad assets, were placed under the supervision of Dragunov's homeland, and thus the White Angel of Death was finally given a brief yet well deserved respite. Yeah, he just likes model building and he builds pink tank models. But the company that makes his model tanks went bankrupt, so he can't finish his tank. And then he just puts a Mokjin head on it. That's so funny. I, I, ah, this has so much personality and so much character and it's so fun. Ah, I like this one a lot. This has to be low S. This has so much personality, so much character. But like... The fights were pretty irrelevant, especially the first three were completely irrelevant. But I like it way more than Claudio's. It's it's high A to low S. I like the ah, it has so much personality, so much character. I'm not sure. Ah, I'm going to leave it at at high A because the fights were so irrelevant. There were so boring fights, so irrelevant fights, except for the last two. But in the last two, not really. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at A. Let's see what's Feng Wei's. His first fight is against Asuka, they have a unique opening scene. Then against Jack, they have a unique opening as well. A unique intro, I mean. Then against Kuma, who is like... It's funny because it's just a bear and... Just a robot and then just a bear. And Devil Jin? I, I, I mean, they have a theme. They have a theme. And the final one is against the Royce. Feng Wei defeated Leroy Smith, then claimed victory at the tournament. Yet the Kempo Master felt no conceit, devoting himself to reaching even greater heights.
终于称霸天空。嗯。Bad sugar. What were you doing, sugar? I mean, this is a lot of characters. This is kind of funny. The uh, fights had a theme. The theme was Asuka and Feng have a, a unique intro. And then it was just Jack and Kuma, who are like not even real fighters. And then Devil Jin, who is not even a real fighter, like n not merely humans, these three. And then Leroy. And then uh, the end episode has a lot of character and it's quite funny. It has to be A. It's A. I think it's low A. I think it's low A. This is better than Alessa's. I don't think it's better than Brian's. Brian's had no theme for the fights, but the cutscene was way funnier. The next one is Horang. Okay, his first fight is against Asasena. That's pretty relevant. Then Lee. That's pretty relevant. Then Feng. That's pretty relevant. Then Asuka. That's kind of relevant. And Steve. That's just... They have a unique intro because one is kicking and the other one is punching. And that's it. You don't even fight against Jin. Coincidentally, he's just riding the bike on the same road at the same time. Yeah, I think that was pretty funny. I think the funny thing about this was Jin, like Jin's reaction. Jin was just driving. He did not want to talk to Horang. He did not want to fight Horang. And Horang for some reason wanted to fight him so bad. And then the bike with Paul and Law drove past them. And Jin was like, what? wait, wait. Did you see that? And who was that? And uh, Horang was just... I dislike Horang's personality. He always says that he hates Jin or that he uh, just does not care about Jin. But then he searches for him like weeks and weeks. <laughs> and he's so frustrated that he can't find him. And when he finds him, he, he still wants to fight him. It's, it's so weird, Horang's personality. But the cutscene was quite nice just because of Jin. I would have put this in D tier because this was completely irrelevant. This, this was like actively a waste of time. But the final cutscene had like this one Jin moment. That's why I wanted to put him in the bottom of C. It's very close to complete time waste. Let's see Jax fights against Lee. That's pretty fair. Then Steve, pretty different fighting styles. Then Yoshimitsu, pretty different fighting style as well. Then Kuma, that's a very different fighting style. And then the other robots where he has a unique intro with. That's, it's funny. That's cute. Like, cute funny. The fights were pretty lame, except for Alessa. I mean, it makes sense, but uh, yeah. The final cutscene was kinda nice. It's like B tier. It's completely average. Like, uh, 
on Alistair's level. Next we go with Jin. So Jin in his psyche fought against Alistair, that makes no sense. Then Lars, that makes like some sense. Then Horang, that makes like some sense. Then Xiaoyu, then Devil Jin. One of the best cutscenes. That's so nice. That's so nice. It's just nice. If you watched Baki, he does the same thing like fighting the ghost of someone multiple times. I think that trope is really nice. It's it just... It's nice. And then the eating part and eating with June, I think that's really great. I think that's just completely wholesome and cute. And the fights made kinda sense. It was like he descends into his subconscious, fights against a lot of his friends, and then Devil Jin. That made sense. I think it's low S. I think it's low S. Like Devil Jin's was way cooler, but this was this was quite nice. Let's see June's. In this alternate version of the story, June just shows up at the Colosseum and fights everyone. Every single person. First she fights Jin, then she fights Devil Jin, then she fights Kazia, then Devil Kazia, and then she just fights Azazel. Like what the hell? She just shows up and she she kills everyone. And then this cutscene, man. This cutscene hit me so in the feels. <laughs> She has the G Corporation blanket. Oh, this one is so good. This is so good. This is easy top S tier. This is so much better than Jin's, <laughs> I have to say. This is so good. Imagine she just showed up in the story <laughs> in the Colosseum. She, <laughs> she KO'd Jin, Devil Jin, Kazuya, Devil Kazuya, and then Azazel. <laughs> what the hell, man? But I think the intro and the ending made it canon that she survived and that she is alive and that she's searching for Kazuya and Jin. And at the end of the story we, we see her shoes and uh, some thought like uh, Kazuya died and that's why we see Jun's shoes. I think Jun is alive and Jun found Kazuya. I like this one so much. And now comes one of my other favorites. Holy shit man, it's Kazuya's. So the first one is against Paul. The rivalry between Paul and Kazuya leads back to like Tekken 1. They both have a real rivalry. Paul is reduced to a joke character in the past one or two games, but they had a real rivalry. Claudio wants to kill Kazuya, Victor wants to kill Kazuya as well, Lee and Kazuya have a real rivalry as well. And it's the same thing with Paul. Lee gets reduced down to a joke character, to a comic relief character, but Lee was the adopted son of Hihachi because he wanted a rival for Kazuya. What the hell, man? The rivalry between them is really great. And then the last one is Lars, which, which is one of his brothers. These fights made a lot of sense. Hmm. 
くだらん質問だ次くだらん俺の人生は今まで戦いに彩られていたあいつと知り合ったのもとある戦いのさなかだ闘争が日常である俺の周りに弱者は必要ないそしてこいつはうん強いそれだけだ次<笑>俺は全てを手に入れる。<笑> And then we make it again canon that June is alive. And we get like a hint of an answer. How do June and Kazuya like each other? Most people didn't assume that they like each other at all. Like, they, they, they made a child. <laughs> like, and they apparently they like each other. Like, how? How is this possible? And they give like a hint because she is strong. <laughs> and we get this nice shot. This is so funny. He's just collecting sneakers. And this is. Easy, easy S tier. Easy S tier. I think. Oh, was June's better? That's hard to say. I think Kazuya's was better than June's. Ah,、oh, they are both really similar. They are both really similar. They are both really similar. I can't really say which one was better. I will put this like that for now. They are really similar. Next up is King. He fights against Law. It has not really a reason. Then Feng. That has not really a reason. Then Paul. That has not really a reason. Brian. That has not really a reason. And Steve. They have a unique intro. And that's it. What? Did you come to rub it in? Or do you still want to fight? The mixed martial arts special charity match is about to begin! King Steve Fox. There's the bell to start the match! Steve rushes in right off the bat. King rides instinctively, but here comes the snake charmer. This feels more like a real fight than a charity match. Get ready to fly. A blurry combo from Steve. King shows off some clever report though, and it's a roundout body press. A roar from King as the table turns. But Steve counters. Hey, come on! What? Steve back on the beat! There it is! The Tomahawk! It's all over! Yeah, I like the、uh, subtitles at the end. And this is just wholesome. The fights had nothing to do with anything at all, but the ending was quite wholesome. Yeah, it's, it's B. The ending was wholesome. And that's it. I think Jax was funny at least. This is B. Now Kuma gets his turn. Paul and Kuma have like a rivalry. That makes sense. Shaheen makes no sense. King makes no sense. Leo makes no sense. And Xiaoyu is, he says, like,、uh, if I beat you, can I ask Panda if I can marry her? And that's it. Is 
yeah, this was just comic relief. Yeah, I dislike the ones where in reality something else happened. There's one that comes up that I like a lot, but the in reality something else happened uh, just... This was just... Yeah, it's high C. It was just comic relief. There was no reason for anything. It's quite funny. It's high C. Lars. His first fight is against Lee. That's pretty average. Then Victor. That makes also a lot of sense. They are both rivals. Then Asasina. That makes no sense at all. Then Jin. That also makes a lot of sense. Jack. Ah, I skipped Jack. Yeah, Jack is completely irrelevant. G Corporation forces are trying to take over the world. But we of the Rebel Army refuse to let that happen on our watch. We've gathered state-of-the-art flying boats in good number. So too do we have the latest weaponry. One for you, and one for you too. There's plenty of fun to be had as well. You're certain to have the time of your life. Come, we want you to join the Rebel Army. Join now and we will provide a high-performance battlesuit when you enlist. There's no need to worry about raids from g -Corp. We have reliable allies on our side. Captain Elisa Boskonovich. <laughs> Join us in our fight for freedom. Commander Lars Alexanderson. いや、最高の演技だったよ、ラース。<笑><笑> Yeah, I like I like the ending. It was alright. Uh, it's better than Alessas. Is it A tier? The ending cutscene was like as good as Alessas, and I would have thought Alessas was maybe A. Three of the five fights made a lot of sense. Ah, uh, this might be low A. It's on Fangway's level. One of these two is better. Let's see what's Law's. Law just needs money, because Law always needs money. And then he fi uh, only fights rich people, and he only says, I hate rich people every time. That's the meme. He always says, I hate rich people. And he only fights rich people. And at the end, he fights Paul. What's wrong, sidekick? You've been contacted by the UN. In regards to the wars caused by Mishima Zaibatsu, they've sent you a bill for damages. Yeah, the ending cutscene was very funny. I like the theme, like I hate rich people. I think the law has become kinda cringe. I, I, I liked him more in prior games, like in the earlier games. I think with every game he became more cringe. But it was quite funny. It was quite funny and it had a theme, it made sense. It's somewhere around here, somewhere around here, like maybe, maybe here. Yeah, it made sense. Next up is the rich guy, so it's Pretty relevant who he fights, that's why he fights Ryan, Yoshimitsu, Jack, Lars, Kazuya. Like, he has a f the fight against his rival at least at the end. Now the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu, he began mass producing the next gen battle suit he used in the tournament. These suits were used to put an end to the war, boosting his influence even further. <笑>ついに世界の頂点に立ったぞ。マスター、お知らせが一件ございます。<咳> 
先ほど我がバイオレットシステムズの平和維持活動部隊が奇襲にあり、うん、各所で甚大な被害が出ております何ヘイハチライブ映像を出してくれこちらになります苦戦しているようだね仕方ないここは私の出番だねハチ留守番を頼んだよかしこまりましたマスターエクセレント<笑>フリリアンいや、このエンディングは Quite nice. I like the characterization that he is not、uh, cringe and comic relief. He is a bit funny, it's a bit comedical, but he is still cool, and that's what he was in prior Tekken games. Like, I remember him in Tekken 4 as Violet. He was really, really cool. He was like a bit funny, but he was very cool, very elegant. And with every game, he became more only funny. Not really cool. And this one was kind of cool. I like this.、Um, it's、uh, The fights were pretty mid. That's why I would say it's like B, IB. Because Alasa, the fights were mid as well. And for Lee, the fights were mid as well. They were both mid. The only question is、uh, which ending was better, which cutscene was better. And I think. Lee's cutscene was better than Alasa's. Next up, we have Lee Roy. We have Leo. I i do not know the alphabet. Holy shit. He fights against Yoshimitsu. That was quite funny in Tekken 7. Then Nina, that has no reason at all. Then Steve, that has no reason at all. Raven has no reason at all. And Azucena, they only have like this unique intro and、uh, story mode interaction. But besides that, there's no reason at all. Papa, ich glaube, wir haben einen unglaublichen archäologischen Fund gemacht. Da hast du recht.、Hm? Sei vorsichtig. Was? Du! Was hast du getan, Papa? Ich habe ihn nur ganz kurz berührt. Was ist denn, Papa? Lauf! Das sind Sachen vom Kaliber kostorikanischer Steinkugel! Was sollen wir tun? Die Ruinen stürzen ein! Nichts als ein bedauerlicher Unfall. Das bleibt unter uns. Leo, hier kommen wir raus! Lauf, Papa! That was neat. The fights did not make any sense. The ending was quite neat. This is a B. This is somewhere in, in B. It's, it's just mid. It's alright. Let's see D boys. Shaheen, that makes no sense. Then Law, that makes no sense. Then Feng, there is the rivalry between them. And then Xiaoyu. Apparently, Liyue and Xiaoyu know each other, but I have missed that. I don't know where that happened. The last time I saw you was on the streets of Hong Kong. What do you say we spar again? Somewhere and see. It's whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> like, it's on the brink of. It, it wasted my time. Like, I don't care about anything that happened in this、uh, character episode. 
It's very on the brink of it wasted my time. Let's see Lilies. King makes no sense. Leo makes no sense. Jin makes no sense. And Asuka is the rivalry. So that makes sense. Je vous promets à tous qu'en tant que chef de la Mishima Zaibatsu, je ferai de ce monde un monde meilleur. Merci infiniment. Bonjour, Maître Leroy. Les discours me rendent toujours nerveuse. Quoi <clears throat> You're the head of Mishima Zaibatsu now. It's expected of you. En fait, je n'étais pas vraiment intéressé par le poste. <laughs> hey, you two. What are you two rich people talking about? If you're talking about ways to earn money, I want in. En fait, ce café Smith. Oh, this? J'ai entendu dire hey, que ce n'était pas vraiment politique. Hey, don't leave me out. I had them let me go. Yeah! Yeah! Oh! C'était une bien belle danse. <laughs> Comme je le pensais, le combat me sied beaucoup mieux. Je dois partir. Tu viens ça? It's kind of funny. I like it. I didn't expect to like it that much, but yeah, I mean, it's maybe better than the yours. That's it. Because I I thought these uh, interruptions where she posed for photos was so funny. But besides that, uh, it's it's all right. Let's see. Ben, does Nina? Dude, I do not know the alphabet. What is wrong with me? Holy shit! I I think I need to go back to primary school. What what is happening? So Jack and show you where. Completely relevant, Raven is very relevant, Claudio is very relevant, and Kazuya is like, that's the target. Nina has to kill Kazuya. That was for blowing up the whole building. Consider us even now. I thought that was quite charming. I think that is the best Nina content that I've seen in my life. Because I really dislike Nina, but I liked this ending a lot. I like that ending. I mean, at B tier we have like the fights are completely irrelevant, except for maybe one. This can't go higher than B. But I liked the ending. I think I liked the ending this much. Let's see Bandas. Asuka, Steve, pretty relevant. I don't know anyone that could be relevant except for Shouyu. And Shouyu was not the last fight. Shouyu was not even a fight. Kuma was the last fight that's relevant as well. Yes, the other fights were completely relevant. of the Mishima Zaibatsu. What's your first order of business? Is there anything you'd like to say to our viewers?
Yeah, that's completely comic relief. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah, the fights were pretty relevant as well. It was very comic relief heavy. It's like on Nina's level. I find it was funnier than Nina's. Let's see balls. So Paul is late to the tournament and then he fights Kuma, which is one of his rivals. Then June and June says the funniest line. Imagine this. Paul just beat up Kuma. They have a long-standing rivalry and Kuma wants to kill Paul and he just self-defended. And June comes out of her slumber, out of a coma, to say there's no excuse for animal abuse. This is the funniest shit that I have ever seen in my life. Like this is this was my life reaction when I uh, played this one. Get ready for the next battle. June? Eh? There's no excuse for animal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jack storms in and wants to uh, kill Paul. Then Paul and Brian have like a slight rivalry because Paul says he's the strongest ever and Brian is a cyborg. And then there comes in Law who says like, dude, you are so late. And Paul was like, you don't know what I've gone through. And this is so true. So then they drive in this uh, motorcycle. This is the same motorcycle that uh, Jin and Horang saw. And he said, oh, you're finally awake, which is like a Skyrim reference. That's so nice. After all of this, he is too late to the tournament. That's so funny. If we rate this on pure funniness, this is by far the funniest. And this, there's no excuse for animal abuse was the funniest shit I've ever heard. That's so funny. I think I have to give it low S tier just because of that. I would rate it high A, but no, it was so funny. <laughs> Let's see what... Raven's is. So Raven was just practicing, that's why he fights just strong characters. Feng, Horang, Shaheen, Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu and Raven at least have this rivalry of like, you are no real ninja. I don't know why Raven is so disrespectful, because Yoshimitsu and Victor are very respectful, but Raven is so disrespectful. I don't really like that. And then he defeats Dragonov, which Victor did, n did not manage to do. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Te voilà. Quel combat incroyable. J'ai senti mon sang bouillir. Forgive me. What? is dead. What does this mean? Huh? How did that get there? Raven. Tu commanderas désormais ton unité sous le nom de Code Great Raven. I'm honored. Il y a une dame qui m'attend. Continue de faire du bon travail. Tu es en charge du reste. Aïe aïe, sir. Victor just pieces out and says, yo Raven, you have my job now. I'm going to peace out. That's really wholesome, but like, it's so irrelevant. I don't really care. I like Victor. I like Victor's personality. And I thought like, uh, 
It's so irrelevant. I think I put him at D tier. It's, it's so irrelevant. I don't care. I just don't care about anything that happened in there. I just think it's a bit funny that this was anime-like at the end. And I like Victor's uh, personality. But no, Reina. First up, she fights against Kuma and says, Kuma, you should work for me. That makes kind of sense. Then Lars, that is actually her half-brother, which is interesting. Then Victor, I don't really know why. It's really relevant. Then Jin, which makes sense, they are related. And then Kazuya, which also makes sense because they are actually half brother and sister. This makes a lot of sense. All of the fights made sense. This was such a banger line. I don't see a suitable cliff. I will finish you off there. It was such a banger line. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> お父様連れて参りました。ふん。おとなしくしろ。ふん。ブザマだな。それが貴様に突きつけられた世界の答えだ。高い。身の程を知れ。ザコが。邪魔だ。新たなる世界の枠組みは私が作る。平八お父様のご意志未来永劫ついえはしないなんてながっかりさせてくれるなよ Know your place dog is her personality is so great. But yeah, this is the one that I talked about. This destroys it so much. Why was this her dream before the final fight? Why wasn't this just a non-canon ending? Why did it have to be a dream? Like, most of the character endings are non-canon. Why did it have to be a dream? That makes it so boring because it was a dream and not it happened in an alternate timeline. That would have been way better. But yeah, the fight themes were coherent. I like the ending a lot. It's contender for S. If it's S, it's low s i think it's even lower than paul's yeah it's s you know why it's s because i didn't see a suitable cliff i'll finish you off there that's such a great line ah it's low s let's see what's shaheen so he fights brian that's irrelevant dragunov that's pretty irrelevant jack that's pretty irrelevant lily that's maybe irrelevant we'll see and then nina nina is the assassin and lily is the person that shaheen needs to protect so these two are not really irrelevant the winner is shaheen J'ai eu tellement peur quand tu as surgi de nulle part. Je ne pensais quand même pas être prise pour cible ici. Miyote, je quoi ils ont maman t'en y'a là? Un grand pan de la G Corporation a été arrêté. La personne qui t'a confié l'épée peut reposer en paix. Non. Un petit 
Que dirais-tu de prolonger ton travail de garde du corps à mes côtés Yame Doki Quoi que tu oui, il faudrait avoir le crâne aussi épais que celui d'Aska pour me protéger. Shaheen is the blandest character. I think if I tried, I could not write a character that is so bland and boring as Shaheen. The ending is carried by Aska and Lily. By Aska and Lily. These two are carrying Shaheen. This is bottom tier. This was such a waste of my life. <laughs> yeah, bottom of D tier. Let's see what Steve is about. So Steve fights Azucena, then Shaheen, that's pretty relevant. Then Asuka, that's irrelevant. Then Leroy, that's irrelevant. And then Horang, that's like they have a unique intro and that's the only relevant thing. So, this is his new gym. It's pretty nice. He is the organizer of the biggest boxing tournament in the world now, after all. Man, must be nice to be rich. With the Mishima Zaibatsu's assets at his disposal, Steve hosts a boxing tournament on a scale the likes of which had never been seen. First, he easily claimed the title of middleweight champion, followed by the super middleweight title, light heavyweight, And then cruiserweight. One after another, the championship belt fell into his hands. That belt means he's won four different weight divisions. He really pummeled him. <laughs> he's finally ready for the heavyweight champion next. Yeah, I can't wait. Hey, Steve, we're here to bother you. Hey, is Steve here? Hmm? Yo, you too. Long time no see. <gasps> it's me. I'm totally ready. What? I like this. It's alright because the fights were pretty meh. The ending was quite funny. It's mightily amusing I think. It's low B. Let's see what Victor has in store for us. First we have a Samurai Ninja against a Samurai Ninja. That's quite interesting. Then Law for whatever reason and Raven. I thought this would be later but it's now. It has a reason. That's a theme. Then Claudio. That is not really a theme except for Victor knows Claudio's organization. And then Dragunov. That is the real rivalry they apparently had at some point. So it makes sense. It was good that Admiral Victor won and brought Mishima Zaibatsu under the UN's control, but the G Corporation hasn't stopped causing violence. Yeah, we're almost at the port. I hope nothing happens. Oh, speak of the devil. Ne tirez pas ici, imbécile. Je m'en charge. Et d'un. Et un autre. Merci. Et encore un. C'est le dernier. Occupez-vous de nettoyer ça. Je fais attendre une dame importante. Don't tell me he deployed a submarine to impress a woman. Is this normal in France? No. It's just him.
I like the interaction with Raven, which is something that I have never said in my life. But Raven is so boring and cold and stoic that it's funny in contrast to Victor, who is so eccentric, and that made it funny. Also, the fights made a lot of sense, so this might be low A. But I think Lee's ending was better. I think I will put Victor like here. The ending wasn't that great, it was a bit funny. The fights were coherent though. That's why he's not down here, that's why he's way up there, and I thought even here. I think he's quite in the middle. Let's see Shao Yu's. Leo makes no sense, Azucena makes no sense, King makes no sense, Horang is just like Shao Yu is searching for Jin as well, and that's it. And then she fights Jin. She actually fights Jin instead of Horang. Horang did not fight Jin. <laughs> Per la luce di Sirio. So she just made world peace. It's so easy. She just did it. So Jin is just there and now we get this anime high school Roman story. And Claudio is the waiter for whatever reason. Ah, oh, and then Moonlight. This is so cute. That's just very cute. The fights made decent sense. That's why I can't put it at A. It was just very cute. I think it's better than Panda. I think it's... Is it better than Alessas? Alessas was very cute at the end. Because of uh, how funny it was that she was like, Jin, where are you? And then Panda was like, he's right here, man. <laughs> I think that's why I, I have to uh, put her above Alessa. So next up we have Yoshimitsu. The fight against Feng is completely irrelevant. The fight against Nina is completely irrelevant as well. The fight against Dragonov is completely irrelevant as well. The fight against Kazuya is only relevant because uh, it's the evil that he was searching for. And then we fight Azazel. That is the actual evil that the sword was searching for. That was quite fun actually fighting Azazel with Yoshimitsu I have to say even though I did not like fighting Azazel at all Oh, that looks so cool. Oh, that last shot looks so cool. Dude, it's like Yoshimitsu's Rage Art. It's so cool. That's the only one that got me goosebumps. The only one. This has to be S tier. Just because of the ending alone. Like, the story is quite nice. Like, uh, which characters he fights is quite a nice theme. But the ending, dude, it, it's so great. Like, the rivalry between Yoshimitsu and Brian is so long, and uh, it looks amazing. Holy shit, it looks so good. Oh, maybe it's even better than Reyna's. 
I think it's better than Paul's as well. It's hard to rank them because these three are so different, but I think it's here. Maybe it's even better than this one. Maybe it's even better than... Yeah, I think I think I even put Yoshimitsu here at number three. He's the third best. The ending is so cool. It looks so good and and I love the rivalry. And the fights made sense. Ah, oh, yeah, it's, it's way too cool to put it lower. It's somewhere in S tier. I think it's here. The last one is Zafina. I don't know why she's fighting Dragunov and Brian. That's makes no sense. Then she's fighting Devilgen, that makes sense. Then Kazuya, that makes also sense. Then Devil Kazuya, that also makes sense. But I expected the last fight to be Azazel, but it wasn't. Power of the Devil. Return to my left arm! Ha! Yeah. Yeah. Azazel. Be sealed! Ha! The Devil's power has now been sealed inside this crystal. Claudio! The time is now! Demone immondo! Sparisci per sempre! Iria! This was just the good ending of Tekken 8. Like Tekken 8, the good ending. Here they really tried to destroy the entire devil, the entire Azazel. And you ask yourself like, what's with Reyna? I think it's low A, like very low A, because I didn't find it that interesting, but it was really good. Like I personally did not find it interesting, but I thought it was very thought through. It made a lot of sense and it was like the good ending of Tekken 8, but with some plot holes. But yeah, I think that is the final tier list. Let me see if I want to change anything. Like these two and D are completely fair. These were so irrelevant. These were quite okay. Mildly amusing, most of them. Yeah, I have to put her lower somewhere around here. These were all mildly amusing. These were all very amusing or very nice in some way, shape or form. They had a decent ending cutscene and a great theme throughout the fights. And in S tier we have Kazuya's is just the best and Jun's is really really good as well. Like th they could swap. They could easily swap. These two are so great. And Yoshimitsu is the only one where I got goosebumps. So I had to put him in S tier. He might go lower, but he gave me goosebumps. Like none of these gave me goosebumps. If, you, if we rate this just on goosebumps, this would be number one. And then Devil Jin was really great. It had a great theme. He just destroyed the entire planet. Jin was very nice, decent theme, very, very nice ending. I, I liked it a lot. Paul was very comedic. Like I laughed out loud so hard. This was the funniest, by far the funniest. And Reyna was a good mixture of very, very funny. And I just love the personality of Reyna. I think this is the final tier list. If you want to see the Rachel tier list, click here. And other than that, see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.